What's up everybody? Elijah Scheidler here with Obsidian Realty. And do you know what this sounds like? Uh, sounds like world change. Uh, tastes like it too. Welcome to 2019's video series. So you guys might be wondering what in the world I'm up to. At this point in time, I'm starting to wonder what I'm up to as well. Uh, it's cold enough out here that this, my beer is literally starting to turn into a slushy in my bottle. It was really cold. I am very cold, if you couldn't tell. So, ever since the beginning of 2019, I've had new vision for my real estate practice and I really started trying to be more true to who I am and have been developing vision out of that for uh, my real estate practice and I haven't really known how to best kick that off and introduce it to you. But fortunately, while I was out snow blowing snow, my neighbor gave me the perfect opportunity. Uh, but to tell you the story, I'm gonna go to the office because it is really cold. Did I mention it's really cold? I'll be right back. Hey there guys. Oh, it is snowing like crazy outside. So uh, I wanna show it to you, but then I'm gonna shut my camera down so I can get inside without getting my camera all snowy. Check that out out there. My goodness, it is just coming down. All right, time to head inside and get warmed up. Whew. Finally made it inside. Now to warm up and to tell you about my neighbor. So on December 31st of last year, my wife and I decided that it was finally time to get a snowblower. Um, when we had just gotten here to Bozeman about four years ago, I had a longboarding accident and tore the ligament off of my elbow. And so we knew that uh, elbow surgery was coming up. And in order to make it easier for my wife to remove the snow, we decided to get a snowblower, which turned out to be a really good thing this year. Um, <clears throat> coffee. Mm. Wait a second, one more sip. So good. We finally decided to get a snowblower instead of shoveling all the snow all the time. We live on a corner of two streets. So when you live on a corner, you have lots more snow to shovel. And it would take me about an hour to an hour and a half to shovel all of the snow just for ourselves. So when I got our snowblower, I found that I was able to do all of our snow in about a quarter of the time. I really appreciated being able to get all of my snow off of my sidewalks and my driveway in a quarter of the time because then I had more time to be inside, to do work or to spend time with my girls and that kind of stuff. So I realized a, an increase in my time budget and for a while, all I did was use my snow blower for myself, blowing my snow off for me and doing it in a quarter of the time and building time for myself. Well, one day while I was blowing snow, I looked over and saw that my neighbor's driveways were super full of snow. Then I got to thinking, what if I use my extra time that I was saving to serve my neighbors? Hmm. What if instead of using all of that extra time that I gained as a result of investing in a snowblower, instead of using it on myself, what if I reinvested that time into serving my neighbors? So the first day that I went out to do the snow, that was a ton of snow. I thought, man, if I'm gonna serve my neighbors, this is gonna take me the next half a day. But I decided, 
it's worth it. I want to invest my neighbors. So I started snow blowing and guys, it took me less time to blow all of the snow in my entire cul-de-sac than it took for me to shovel my snow for myself previously. I was stoked. I was just finishing up the snow on my driveway when my neighbor from across the cul-de-sac came up to find out who I was and why I had blown all the snow out of her driveway. She was super happy that she didn't have to move her own snow, wanted to know my name and connect. And after we got done talking, she hands over an entire six pack of beer. Now, I told her I, I didn't do it in order to get any beer or payment, I just did it because I wanted to serve you because I got a new snowblower and it's really easy for me to move your snow. But she said, it's a huge service to me and I just wanna give you the six pack of beer. So then I told her, no, you don't need to give me a six pack of beer. One beer is fine. Like that'll be great for me. But then she says, it's no big deal for me. I work for a distribution company and I get beer for free. So here, take six. And this is where beer starts tasting like world change. I invested my own hard earned money in a resource that helped me to build an investment in time. It gave me a surplus. And out of a free choice, I decided to choose to serve my neighbor. I had never met my neighbor before up until that point. I think we've been neighbors for a close to a year. So I hadn't reached out to meet her yet. And in serving her, it caused her to want to come across the street and reach out to me, find out who I was. And in coming across the street, she brought a resource that she had a surplus of as a result of her hard work and her hard labor. She works really hard, but her surplus became an expression of generosity to me. I would have blown the snow in her driveway for free, but she came over with a six pack of beer. And when I said, hey, one beer is more than enough, that's very gracious. She went over the top and said, no, I wanna give you an excess. I want to give to you out of my surplus. Here's six beers for free, just for snow blowing my driveway and having a fun time doing it. And likewise, she was happy to receive the generosity of my new snow blower and the expenditure of my time. That it was no trouble for me to blow all the snow off of her driveway and yet she received that as an expression of generosity. Guys, this exchange of generosity, intrinsic generosity, that I had a resource that was not difficult for me to give, but became generosity to my neighbor. And my neighbor, she gave to me out of the surplus that she had that was intrinsic to what she was doing. It wasn't a big stretch for her, but it became received to me as generosity. That reciprocal building of resources and service and generosity is part of what I live for. It, it's the basis of my vision and heart as being a real estate agent in the Gallatin Valley. The specific phrase that you're going to start seeing in my videos and in on my website, in all of the stuff that I produce is brokering properties, building community. We have an amazing community of resources in the Gallatin Valley. We we're so rich in so many things, in outdoor adventure, in nature, in ideas. We have so much industry. We have the college here with youth who are learning all kinds of things that are growing us into the future in technology, in leadership, in social change. And each person has some surplus that becomes intrinsic to their nature, that it's a surplus of either ideas or finances or leadership or service, any number of surplus of things that is extra for them, but when they release it to others, it's experienced by others in their area of need as generosity. Now, a big part in the exchange of that resource is stepping across the street to meet people that up till this point in time, you may not have met. Like me and my neighbor, we live in close proximity. I watch her get in and out of her car and go to work and come home and hang out with friends. And likewise, she sees me do the same and play in my yard with my little girl. But until there was an intentional action of investing in the other person in a way that served them at a point of need, we hadn't walked across the street to meet each other. There's all kinds of 
streets that we have to walk across as Bozeman residents in order to discover our intrinsic resources that we have a surplus of. It could be politically, it could be socioeconomically, it could be status of whether or not you've grown up in Bozeman or moved in from out of state. There's all kinds of streets that have to be crossed. But as we build community, as we serve one another in areas of need, what winds up happening is we discover latent resources that are in surplus that become generosity to other people. That's the beauty, that's the synergy of community. And that's what I'm passionate about as a real estate agent. When you break down what real estate agents do, actually, we sell really big, expensive, insulated boxes. That's not what I'm passionate about. That's just what I do. Why I do what I do is I am a cultural creator. I listen to people's dreams of home where they're going to thrive and I help them find that specific environment where what's intrinsic to their person has an ability to grow and thrive and multiply into a surplus. First for their families, first for them as an individual, for their individual hopes and dreams and desires. But as they gain a surplus, then it overflows into community as generosity to serve the needs of those people around them that need help with something that might be very easy for the person of surplus to fix. As this expression of generosity, of surplus expressed as freedom and love towards one another, the result is we start crossing boundaries, we start walking across streets, we start introducing ourselves to one another and discovering untapped resources that can be generously given without much sacrifice to the person releasing the resource. Hopefully this idea is somewhat clear. Uh, I often think in very spatial, abstract ideas. I'm working on that. I, I realize that in order to invite people along in vision, in order to build a movement towards thriving and multiplying as a community, there has to be clarity. But I think these videos, this space of connecting with, with you, my community, becomes an exercise for me to help grow in that clarity. So the seed of the idea is brokering properties, building community. So throughout 2019, as we continue moving forward, I wanna keep working this vision out here in this space and inviting you, my community, along in this growth. I have a surplus of ideas. I have a surplus of insights and vision and hopes for our community. It's no trouble for me to share them with you. And hopefully as I reach out and step across this mediated gap of media, hopefully my ideas can land with you and invite a stepping across the gap to meet in person, to talk about ideas, and to grow as a community. That's all I've got for you today, guys. If this video has been encouraging for you, like it down below in the comments, share it with a friend, and I'll see you in the next video.